Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Happy to see you guys here with Archetype, sponsored by Lenovo and AMD. I am your host, Ashley, as usual. Um, yeah, it's going. It's going good. So, <clears throat> last month we finished up our student, and so now this is the new one called The Mentor. Uh, let me bring down my reference here. So, I thought it'd be really cool. I always give myself something that's going to be probably challenging to complete in a month, but let's do it because <laughs> lots of hair. Um, but yeah, so we had our martial arts kind of monkey, right? And we're looking for something that feels kind of older, like a teacher. Um, and I thought it'd be really cool to do some sort of like um, orangutan type thing with uh, some cool Shaolin vibes. Um, yeah, their shapes are super interesting. They're very weird creatures. So, but they're fantastic. So we're gonna be drawing some of those today and trying to come up with uh, some ideas. We'll see what we can come up with. And my pure ref is winging out on me. There we go. So if you're in the chat, say hi. I see uh, Lord Luigi Riggs and Jace Covers here. So if you're there, say hi. I don't bite and I can't bite you anyway through the, through the wonderful internets. But yeah, let's get drawn. So like I like I usually like to start out by doing just some initial studies of the photos that I'm doing. Um, just so we can start getting an idea of shapes um, that we can play with here. So I think it's always it's something that I've always watched um, Ian McKaig do. And pretty much a lot of artists, but it's one thing that I definitely saw Ian McKaig do. Was he'll take a, all of his reference that he gathers and then he'll try to, you know initially just try to draw it and to understand it. So if you've never drawn an orangutan before, then, you know, trying to just design one right out the gate isn't going to be the best practice. Thankfully, I've, I have drawn orangutans before, but they are super, super weird. Their anatomy is really interesting, um, even for an ape, just because they have these really big elongated skulls and then their faces have these big skin, skin flaps on them. So, Rob J, hello. Um, so yeah, we're just going to be sitting and kind of studying some of these shapes and stuff first. Orangutans are actually, um, so when we were doing like the kind of like the Shaolin monkeys, right? Um, I mean, first off, orangutans are apes, but we're going to ignore that very specific fact. But um, when I used to go, I live here in LA, and so we have the LA Zoo. And the LA Zoo is so great um, to be able to go do and create life drawing and references of animals. Um, they do a pretty good job too of, you know, trying to do animal conservation and things um, with the animals that they have on site. One thing that I always, uh, I always remembered and I would go and life draw there. I used to go almost every weekend. I definitely want to kind of make more of a habit of that now as well. But when I was a student, I used to go almost every weekend. Um, if I wasn't going there, then I was going to the Natural History Museum. But the uh, the orangutans are really interesting because they pretend to not be curious. You know, the male orangutans would kind of hang out and try to pretend that they weren't interested. But they know if you sit there long enough, you know, because most people at the zoo they'll go in with their screaming child and be like look orangutan and then you know they'll peace out but if you sit you know um and you're drawing and observing them they start to get really curious about what you do or what you're doing there and um i had one orangutan he was a big male one and he was sitting up on the top of the vine he was just like hanging out and every now and then he would just kind of like peek over and kind of like try to see what i was doing um, they're very curious creatures, um, but he wanted to act like he wasn't interested. And then, uh, slowly and surely I was sitting there and drawing all of them. And I think I must have been there for maybe like 15 minutes or so. And then he just couldn't take it anymore. And, uh, he actually came down from his big hanging vine. And, uh, at the LA Zoo, they have a part where you can sit. And then they have like a little balcony on the other side of the glass where they can sit. So you can get really close with them. Um, and so he came swinging all the way down 
and he sat right next to me um and started watching me and he was watching me as i was drawing and it was one of like the coolest experiences that i've had um probably ever but also definitely at the la zoo that was a super memorable one in my mind that i remember so orangutans have always had a kind of a cool little special place in my heart with that they're just super fascinated and they're so curious um and when they watch you they're like really watching you um so if you stay there long enough i highly recommend with most animals you'll find that if you go in early in the morning when there's not a bunch of screaming people or loud noises and stuff you'll see the animal actually come out in their personalities and um yeah it's just really cool so if you do have the opportunity to do it I, I highly recommend it but yeah it was a really cool experience um they're pretty they're pretty amazing creatures but he just kind of fit the bill for what we were working on here for our character designs um I love that they kind of just like the moment they're full grown they're just kind of like old man from the start it's <laughs> it's pretty great um, they've even got this awesome beard that we can, you know, work around and play with awesome shapes. And this, you know, this faceplate they have, this, like, big flap of skin that they have is so interesting. Um, along with the one that's also below on their chest, they're super interesting animals. Um, so there's just, like, a lot of shapes that we get to play with here. Um, and we'll see what we can kind of come up with, but like I said, for now, we're just kind of drawing... I'm trying to just get a little warmed up. But yeah, wherever you're from, if you guys have a even just a small zoo or um, there's a lot of just wildlife centers as well that um, you can probably go to and check out. There was one in San Fernando that I used to go to all the time because I used to work up at, you know, Legacy Effects. And um, there's this tiny little wildlife center that I actually used to go offer and volunteer. And you can volunteer in like a lot of different ways. I mean, you can like dig trenches and stuff if you do that. But you can also just offer um, classes that get involved with the animals. So I used to go up there and um, I used to teach the people going uh, how to draw animals and stuff. So I'd have a little drawing and a big drawing board and I would sit in front of one of the animals and I would draw it and people would watch and could pay for the class and it would go towards the conservation of the animals. So I always thought that was really cool. Um, just always to get involved with uh, your art and drawing and um, especially when it comes to animal art, at least in my opinion. These creatures are so inspiring to the Creatures that we come up and the fantasies that we make for films and for games. Um, and they don't get enough credit for it most of the time. So it's always nice to try to get back uh, to those inspirations and keep them, keep them alive. Got these big furrowed brows. I love it. Again, just trying to find shapes that are interesting. So one thing that I've noticed is a lot of uh, the orangutans, their eyes are really close together. So we might be able to play with something um, where they, we can get their eyes even closer together. So these are things that I'm keeping in mind as far as proportions, how big the face is in proportion to the mouth and things like that. So that way later when we're not just doing studies, we can like push all those things. Uh, Leonardo is asking, uh, how do I sketch at the zoo because the animals move around so much? Yeah, that's that's kind of the idea, um, is that you're supposed to be kind of, it's almost like you're you're practicing taking a snapshot. So what he also mentions is like, do you get a certain pose in your head and try to remember it? And that's kind of what you're doing is you're kind of training your eye. Um, you know, when you see them move, you kind of take a snapshot and you try to do a really quick gesture, you know, because um, you'll see them do it for, you know, a second. Um, so, you know, if I pretend that, you know, this orangutan did something, my first initial pose would be something like, okay, I'm just following one of the references that I have. 
So that would be like the initial one. It was like, oh, I saw him like outstretch his arms, you know? But then what you can do is, you know, when you start practicing these shapes, you'll start seeing how they work in 3D. And that's when you as the artist can go in and say, okay, I know, you know, the, the shape of the head um, in three dimensions, which means I can kind of figure out, because the reference will be right in front of you at the zoo, um, you know, where that, that face is versus, you know, where that pectoralis or chest muscle is or where his kind of big skin flap is. And then you can work out where that torso goes and how the anatomy of the lower leg is. Um, primates are uh, plantigrade. They're like us, they walk on their ankles. Um, so again, also just, not just going to the zoo, but, you know, practicing anatomy and practicing drawing skulls and stuff um, before you go to the zoo is also um, equally as helpful, you know, because then you kind of understand what you're drawing and what you're looking for. Um, so they kind of go hand in hand. You want to practice anatomy and animal drawing when you're not at the zoo, but also when you're at the zoo, you're kind of like putting all those um, anatomy studies kind of the actual use by trying to draw the thing that's moving. And you'll understand the way the animal functions so much more if you just go and study it in front, instead of just from a photo, because you get to watch it move and, and react. And, you know, orangutans are super curious um, and the way they move their eyes and how they look around at stuff and kind of examine their world. You don't get that from a photo. You can try to get that from a photo, but it's not, it's not the same. And you know, your first, uh, your first few sketches drawing at the zoo are going to be hard. You know, it's, it's definitely a skill. Um, but I recommend, you know, there's plenty of, um, one of my favorite things about the LA zoo is the first, uh, animal that you run into at the LA zoo is the alligator. <laughs> um, who doesn't move? He stays pretty still for you. So he's like a really good warm up, you know, so you can go to like the reptile house or something first um, to get a warm up. And then you can kind of try to go draw animals that move a lot more. Um, but there's plenty of zoos too, where the animals kind of lay down a lot. I got pretty good at drawing animals lying down um, because there are a lot of animals that just kind of hang out. Um, but yeah, it's a really great skill to get, to get good at, you know, you can do the same thing with people as well. Let's go out and actually like sit at a cafe and try to draw people around you and stuff. Um, or just pick, uh, if, if the whole person or the whole animal is too hard, just pick a part of an animal, you know? Um, so at cafes, one of my favorite things was to draw people's shoes. Um, just cause it was... Shoes are weird and difficult, and so uh, it was always really nice to be able to just kind of sit and focus down on that one thing. Um, so yeah, it's all about exploring your strengths and weaknesses as well through what, what you can draw easily and what you can't draw. So I think that's really important too. And then... Um, you know, if you're not really ready to draw things in motion or you're having trouble drawing things in motion, I still think seeing the real thing in actual 3D space rather than just in a photo is still really important. And that's where natural history museums can be really helpful. You know, at the natural history museum, they have um, taxidermied animals and they don't move. <laughs> so it's kind of nice. And they're usually really nicely lit and um, they're usually really nicely taxidermed as well. Not sure what the actual proper name for that is. Taxidermied. Um, so, you know, if you need to get your feet wet and just drawing animals, that's another really great place to go and check out um, the actual 3D form. So, and then of course there's some great anatomy books as well. Um, Elliot Goldfinger has human anatomy for artists, and he also has animal anatomy for artists. Um, it's a great book. I've had it in my library for a very long time. It's sitting, I think, right there somewhere. Um, and then there's also uh, Animal Anatomy by Ellen Berger, and that's another really great one. Um, 
That one's much more, uh, it's a more comp, uh, they're drawn more complex and they get a little bit more detailed into the drawings. Whereas, um, the anatomy for artists by Goldfinger, it does, but not on all the animals, but there's a lot of really cool, um, animal anatomy there. You'll get like a hippo's anatomy. You'll get, um, giraffes. I think you get a dolphin in there. And yeah, I used to draw from those all the time. Um, as well. Hello, cook. Hello. So yeah, studying the animal versus really important. There's also, um, you know, just understanding to draw the the species first too. You know, I've drawn a lot of gorillas. I've drawn a lot of apes. So because of being able to draw those two things, if you don't draw an orangutan per se a lot, you still understand primate anatomy, you know? So it's kind of the idea of like, if you draw a lot of tigers, you could probably figure out how to draw a big cat because they're just very, very similar. You know, if you have a, a house cat, you can sit and study their movements and study their anatomy um, and figure out something with that too. So there's, there's tons of ways to, to learn and study from the comforts of your home, but I also implore you to go out and try to see this stuff in real life as much as you can, if you have the uh, access to it. If not, then places like Pinterest are, you know, wonderful sort resources. I love how long their hair can get on their shoulders, it's crazy. And these are really quick little sketches, like they're not, again, they're not supposed to be these really super realistic, super accurate or anything. It's just trying to like get those shapes down to start seeing if I can figure out um, some shapes that I personally like that I'm finding within um, the reference that I've gathered. So that's really more what it's about. And you can easily take any of these two and just start putting some more, a slight more character into them. And you'll easily start getting uh, an actual character and not just a, a reference. So reference turns into character pretty quickly. Um, The other faces are so interesting. Another good example. So I have also, um, I have the anatomy, but I also have the skull and um, the skeleton. Bone Clones has a, is a really good reference page. You can actually buy replicas, they're really expensive. Um, I've always wanted like a tiger skull replica or something, but I've never ended up actually buying one. But Bone Clones is a great way to, um, they have so many skeletons on there. So it's a really easy way to go and just check out some proportions, you know, so I can look at the basic block in of the ribs and how long the arms are. You know, and just do this really basic um, kind of little skeleton just to get myself familiar with um, kind of where these things line up. Like their pelvis is really tall, like really long in the back here. And then their, their back legs are not very long, right? And I love that their feet, if you look at how they... they uh, if they're standing upright on their feet or when they're walking, their feet are actually not flat, but they're sideways. So their feet kind of curl and sit like that on the ground, which is really interesting, right? So we're definitely going to add that into our character because um, that in itself has so much character. So, <clears throat> you know, it's really important to observe these things and go, oh, wow, I didn't know this about this animal. How cool. And that's how we can make our animals and our characters feel more grounded. But look how long their arms are. Their arms are so long. So it's one of those things that I think we're going to really try to 
push and exaggerate um, in our uh, in our design. Those are some some terrible lines. <laughs> But hey, if I get the basic shape of it, it's fine. Yeah, and they have this huge... So they have, um... Oh, someone says following right now on Instagram. Oh, wait. Uh, Oliviera on YouTube says, um, I talk about shapes, which is the most important thing to deserve when you'll find the soul of the character in the beginning. You only want that to be a good representation. Sorry, I'm trying to break that down. Um, so I think, I'm assuming what you're asking are, are shapes important in the beginning or as the whole um, of character design? And I think it's, I think it's important to, in the beginning, explore a lot of shapes, but then when you find those shapes that you like, that's what's going to define as you say, like, the soul of your character later, um, is, like, kind of sticking to that shape language or sticking to that design. Um, or, you know, in this case, we're taking orangutan anatomy and we're kind of pushing it. Just doing a quick skull study here and then I'll probably, I think I'll probably be good after this. Um, it's really funny how close together their eyes actually look. But yeah, th this is all about kind of trying to explore and trying to familiarize myself with what the real shapes of um, orangutans are and then trying to figure out how we can take those and utilize those shapes or push those shapes into, um, you know, a fantasy realm into our own world, right? So yeah, shape is always important from beginning to end. Um, shape exploration is something you do in the beginning, and then it's all about the consistency of the shapes that you find um, that'll make that design interesting. I hope that makes sense, and I hope that answers your question. You have really big jaws, but you would never, you would never know that <laughs> because it's hidden behind um, the faceplate. Big skin flap. Look at those teeth too. Yeah, those teeth jut out quite a bit. So this is another thing that you can do in 3D. That's actually, or not in 3D, in digital. That's um, you can do it in 3D. I've done it plenty of times. Is you know you can do something like this, like the skull, um, and then you can lower the opacity, and then on top try to add the actual anatomy. Um, and see where, see if you can make sense of it, right? Where, uh, where all this goes. And they have the big, again, they have a big fat pad that goes behind their skull that's not even part of their cranium. They have a big cranium, but then on top of that, they also have this like giant kind of, kind of like a gorilla. Right, so you can start kind of breaking down where all these uh, points are. So if you can draw a skull and then draw on top of that skull and it's looking like actual orangutan proportions, then you probably drew the skull correctly. Um, or at least somewhat correctly. <laughs> I'm not trying to stray too far from, you know, what I what I drew. And you can see where the jaw it just hides underneath that big giant um, skin flap. So it's really important to draw structurally the um, the skull and the anatomy. But it's also important to know that there's a lot of things that the skull won't tell you about some animals, right? Because you know, an orangutan, for example, has so much going on. Um, 
above not just even the skull or the musculature but the skin itself right um so something same thing like a rhino birds are always a really great example of this all birds at a skeletal level kind of look like chickens um but what makes a barn owl a barn owl or what makes an eagle an eagle are very they're very varied in skull shape but they're more prominent in feather shape right in like how the musculature is formed um so it's just really important to keep both those things in mind the skull is always important to study, regardless of whether you feel like you'll see it at the end or not. Um, just because it gives you something to hold on to um, structure wise. So now that I've studied the skull, I can say, you know, I have um, there's like goggles, right, where the eyes will be. And then there's kind of this oval shape where the skull and the, the mouth sits. Right. And then this is where the zygomatic arch is. This is like a very simple Right, if we're gonna like cartoonize that. Um, that's kind of the idea. It's the same thing that we're capturing here, it's just in a more realistic-ish level, so. Cool, so now we kind of did that. Let's kind of start coming up with some ideations or some designs. So I'll probably start first with um, Trying to come up with what I think could be uh, just the anatomy of the character itself and how we're going to push that shape. So, you know, we can start by saying maybe it's got a super oval face. And I'm also going to try to figure out, um, you know, if this character's standing, how would this character probably stand? And we're going to add that little weird You know, do we want a character that's kind of <laughs> big and droopy kind of thing? You know, is that what we're going for? Or are we going to go for, you know, something that feels maybe not not so, like, droopy? But it's, it's important to explore all these. Because um, then you can find out what you like and what you don't like about each exploration. And take that idea and maybe maybe now I can say what if we make him like really big and square or something. So he feels like a lot stronger. Um, and this is going to be pushing more of that actual character. It's always good to start. Like I would say this is pretty simple. This first drawing, right? Cause it's pretty much just orangutan proportions. But now it's like, okay, how can we push the relationship of all these shapes together to get something um something even more interesting You know, I think I want the arms to be so long that he's probably not going to just be able to fully stand up. He's probably always going to be kind of at an angle. Um, maybe he'll always be on all fours. Or if he's going to be um, standing, he's actually just going to be standing on his uh, on his hind feet, on his feet, or on his uh, hands. Sorry. Right. So he'll just always have his it or something which would be kind of interesting can we get the uh, jungle book soundtrack to start playing king louis is probably one of my favorite he's not this kind of orangutan though they kind of keep him more subtle 
Synth is here. Hello. Happy Tuesday. I feel like all of a sudden I'm not being able to press as hard. Maybe that's just because I had my brush too small. You can try to add a bit more humanistic proportions, right? Let's see what happens. So again, this is just exploration of those big shapes, those big ideas. These, sh these should be very different from one another at this stage. Um, if all your shape design kind of looks like the very first thing that you drew, just slightly varied, then you're probably, you're kind of doing this process slightly wrong. This is where you're supposed to getting, be getting out all those ideas. Um, So they should all feel pretty different from one another for the most part. Kevin, happy Tuesday. Yeah, I think it's kind of fun. It's a little more evened out than this version, which in that case, I would say I'd want to take this version and exaggerate that even more, probably, if I was going to go that route to really sell the fact that he really doesn't walk on his um feet that he really just walks on his hands. Now it is interesting because we want to think about the poses that this character would be doing um, and how they would be able to move. It's one of those things where uh, pushing too far, depending on what you're trying to accomplish with your design, might not work. For a drawing, it might work, but when we're thinking about 3D and maybe at some point this character is going to be animated or something, um, there's some of these that probably just ultimately wouldn't work because it's too limiting for the movements that you know that he would need to perform. Um, as a model on uh, in like a live action movie or not a live action movie in like a animated movie or something like that. So um, it's important to keep that stuff in mind as well. I'm going to draw one from the side and see if I I don't usually do a lot of side views just because I feel like they don't usually give me enough information to work with, but I kind of want to play with um, the back legs and stuff. If I go this type of route, this is something that feels a bit more animal than it does anthropomorphic, right? Versus our um, our student character, you know, our female monkey that we did last month. Um, so the question is, does that work with the, uh, you know, the world that we're building? You know, can this type of thing make sense, or is it going to break their ability to kind of like be on screen together? Um, I think in our case, I don't, I don't think it's that bad. 
but it is something that you you know you want to consider when you're designing animals or when you're designing for stuff that's supposed to fit in the same world right like if you look at um zootopia is a really good example of this all those characters all walk on their uh they're all bipedal, regardless of whether it's a giraffe or a fox or anything. Even the really tall, like, you know, gazelle, they all are bipedal, right? So they don't break that anthropomorphic um, version of themselves. So it's just important stuff to keep in mind. I'm going to keep exploring. I think for the case of our of our designs, I think I do want them to be more anthropomorphic than walking on all fours. So I don't mind the idea that maybe his arms are kind of always out or always touching or always kind of like um, bent up or something like that because his arms are super long but ultimately he walks on his uh on his legs on his back legs kind of like this idea but i think i like the idea of see if we can make him so our, our other character is very triangular right so can we now find something shape wise that's going to bring out the uh, uniqueness in our character design I think part of that will be maybe squaring this dude off a lot um, so I think maybe squaring off the back of his head let's square his shoulders up a lot too Then maybe even this uh, weird skin sack thing will be kind of squared off. And we can play with, you know, squared tapered out could be interesting, right? Where he's got really big taper and he's got maybe really tiny legs. Like that's kind of fun. Very squared off hand. So we're, we're going for like kind of trapezoidal, square, rectangular type shapes to try to get that. And this is maybe what um, Olivier was, what I'm, you know, this is kind of what I'm doing, what I was talking about before. We're now we're, we're trying to find a shape that we can start sinking all shapes within to start finding uh, a more unique shape language for a character. I think that's kind of interesting. You know what we can do? Let me see if I even can grab this. I think I can. Let me see. Copy. Paste. Yeah, there we go. So something that you can even do, again, there's no rules here. Flip this. Lower the opacity. So if I have the um, the skeletal structure here, I could even kind of start drawing on top of that. I'm just saying, okay, what what with my with the shapes that I kind of came up with, you know, how does this work anatomically? with what is already existing. You know, does it work? And we're obviously going to be, we're making his um, legs a lot uh, smaller, right? But this is somewhere where you could easily start somewhere like this. Just to see if what you're doing is working. Um, 
right? So that's just an example of something that you can do. If, you, if you're feeling stuck, you can easily take your reference um, and kind of push it into that realm. So now I'm going to move this over and delete that area. Again, I think I've done this plenty of times at this point, but um, I'm just going to duplicate and then play with shapes even more, right? So we can be like, what would it feel like if it tapers in instead? You know, maybe he's got a bit more of the, instead of just being kind of like a trunk of a leg, you know, what if it's got a bit more actual knee? Right. So this is the stuff that I like to kind of play with in the beginning, just to kind of find a shape um, that I think could be interesting. And I think this is more interesting because we're playing with the idea of like big, medium, small here. So, you know, Big probably being more of like his torso and then maybe medium being his thighs and then small maybe being his like really tiny feet or something like that. Just giving contrast to all that is really helpful um, in making like an interesting shape. I also don't want his feet to distract too much. His biggest, um, at least in my head when I'm going to be sculpting this guy, the part that I'll be focusing on the most are going to be his arms, right? His arms are going to be the most important part to get right. And I want, eventually, I think it'd be really cool to have his fur just be really big and his fur take up, you know, most of the shape that he actually is. Um, versus uh, anything else, so. I think that could be kind of interesting to play with. Once I feel like I maybe have something, I can start kind of maybe draw like a face. See if I can come up with an interesting face for this. Uh, very squared. Orangutan face. Me making his eyes, um, you know, make him feel more old or aged or experienced. You know, a lot of that's going to be in his um, expression and, and a lot of those details come with uh, stuff that we'll do with the eyes themselves. Maybe he's got um, like scraggly, bushy eyebrows or something. And then uh, they basically, they have such great beards already. <laughs> it's so good. Um, but again, we can kind of accentuate. What that beard could be. It could be really, really long beard. 
get tied off in a little scraggly knot or something. And then their hair on top is so interesting because a lot of them seem to, I mean, a lot of them kind of go forward, which is interesting. They kind of move across the, the top like that. So we can, we can, we can maybe play with that later. There's some that have really long hair that goes to the side, but I'm not really a fan of that. I think it obstructs the, the face too much. Um, But he might be the classic uh, crotchety old mentor who's like, meh, none of these students are good, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be really harsh and strict. And then this young student comes in and changes his mind that, you know, teaching is still fun or <laughs> whatever it may be. Yeah, some scraggly eyebrows will be be kind of interesting. Pie made from Kill Bill. I think I remember who that, who you're talking about. God, I'll have to look up a picture of that one. So that's kind of a somewhere we can go along the lines of. So we'll go ahead and hide that one. Grab these guys, make them smaller, bring them over here, make a new layer. Coffee break. Yeah, so I think for... Because I'm looking at the poses right now that we have um, to kind of have this character come a little more to life. I don't want him to feel like he's not mobile, right? Like, I want him to feel experienced, but um, I don't want him to feel like he's old and fragile, right? We want him to still feel like he's really strong. Um, Oh, and he kept stroking his beard. Oh, that could be fun. We should maybe play with that as a as a pose. Um, so maybe like an old man who's sitting. I really like, there's also my reference. Um, we're all adults here. There we go. Uh, this reference here, I think is really interesting. Um, I like this person's attitude. I like the way they're sitting and I mean, maybe we could have him stroking a beard, but I kind of like the idea that maybe he, you know, has like a big pipe or something that he would smoke. Um, it could be kind of cool. But I want him to feel able to do something like that, you know? I mean, this is, I mean, this with this is so, they're so close, you know? Um, so I want him to still feel able, because when you watch orangutans in real life, even though they're huge, um, they are so graceful in ways that you would never really expect. So I think I want to try to, for our kind of like final design drawing, I think I want to try to capture something like this. Um, I think that's pretty cool. So, um, but maybe instead of his arm resting like this, maybe he's holding out, you know, maybe instead we'll kind of combine these two where he's holding like a big weapon or something. And then he's got his pipe in the other or something like that. I think that could be kind of cool. Um, 
And these de details here are just really interesting. I like these big kind of bows and knots and things and these like little decorative sashes. So we'll see what I can kind of add. And the last one had a Mongolian reference as well, which I think this might be what this is. I might be wrong. Looks also slightly Native American, but um, again, Pinterest doesn't tell me and usually it's not very accurate. So um, I'm gonna try to capture kind of from my reference this kind of idea of a character. Probably always too zoomed in. I always end up zooming in too far. These just are feeling in my way now. Now I just gotta get them away. Because I wanna I wanna be able to I want I kinda want our design to really hone in on the fact that he's got super long arms, so I'm thinking maybe uh I gotta look up someone smoking a pipe now. Good old Pinterest. Always nice just to have some sort of reference of how uh, people hide because I don't smoke a pipe, so <laughs> I need to see like how people hold it. Um, again, if you don't know something about what you're drawing, um, do not sit here and try to play guessing games. Um, right? Just look it up. I think that's probably the most important thing. And this is just trying to find a block in that I like. You know, we can remember we kind of went with the, the really square. A lot of my reference too, they kind of have their, they're kind of hanging out with their arms or with their uh, feet kind of like that. I like the idea of all of this hair kind of hanging down. I think that could be cool. And then figuring out, you know, costuming. Um, I think uh, it'd be interesting if we had, a lot of them have, uh, it's kind of like one big sash and kind of drape down. We might be able to play, you know, I, I like the idea of the hair hanging here, but later, you know, maybe there is one that's sleeved up because they also have these really long sleeves sometimes. And that would actually be kind of fun because it would serve the purpose of like holding all the hair, right? Or something like that. But I think for now, I, I like the idea of keeping the fur, but...
So again, nothing um, super solidified, just trying to get my idea down and possibly changing proportions. I want, to, I want them to feel big, but I'm trying to play with should the face be really small or should it be bigger or maybe it's just a matter of making his the face skin, like the face flaps, really big. Beard would go down to sorry if I'm not talking as much, I'm quite concentrated now. Got some good chill music in the background, just drawing. I think that's kind of interesting. And then maybe we can come up with some sort of, um, I don't know what kind of weapon he would have yet, but I feel like something kind of like more intricate than what the student had, right? Something that feels maybe more complicated. Feels kind of, um, not noble, but because it's not that necessarily He's noble or richer or anything like that. It's just the idea that he has something that's a little more special because um, he's a little higher rank in, in their world of teaching. So something like that, maybe. Maybe he's got paints. Our last character, we tried to put some straps on, but we didn't end up actually putting straps on. So maybe, maybe this guy will have something interesting. Trying to see if that fits. I think his eyes need to be closer together. I think that could be kind of fun.
They have a lot of these like um, little beads and bands and stuff, so you can do something like that. For here. Oh, it says it looks like my grandpa. <laughs> Good. It's supposed to look a little older, so let's see. Still not quite sold on this face yet. I feel like there's going to be quite a bit of exploring that we'll do in uh, in 3D, but there's, I don't know. He's got really long eyebrows. It's again. I'm not afraid to just erase. It's not working. I think it's really important to um, not get married to your drawing because then you're not going to be able to find the most unique thing or the thing that's going to work for you. A lot of times I think people try to rework something that's already there. Um, And sometimes just redrawing it is just better. We'll have to look up what maybe like a Chinese pipe would look like, or not like a traditional one. That would probably help me out a little bit too. I'll look it up in a second. Um, I just want to kind of Wrong in the mode of drawing this dude's face. I kind of want to stay in that mode. That's feeling a little better. Sometimes you just have to, again, restart and slow down. Or, uh, I kind of wanted to get this feeling of a slight gauntness. Um, not weakness, but I just, you know, his face should feel aged. So his eyes are a bit more sunken in and things like that. I think that's kind of fun. I think the uh, long eyebrows work. I like that. I think that's pretty fun. Again, I just didn't feel like the last one was, it just really felt like I was missing something. I also just didn't think it was a very good drawing. <laughs> so I was struggling making that drawing feel right. And I was like, just, dude, just start over and just do it again. It's been a long time, by the way, since I've drawn in Photoshop. I'm mean, used to Procreate now, so this has also been an interesting experience because I'm, I'm actually just drawing on uh, my computer tablet now. Um, that's been fun. 
Maybe his, uh, maybe his face is a little more droopy. There we go. That's feeling pretty cool. I think one thing now is... I need more space is what I need. Oops. But I want his, um... I want his staff to be a lot bigger. But I also want him to be a lot bigger now because his face is really big. So... I want to take Try to, you can also play with, you know, if I put his head down here, see how hunched he kind of looks. So that's kind of cool. Kind of like that. You can see I totally just break my drawing. Um, looks like my mother-in-law. <laughs> you guys are being. <laughs> um, oops. Um, go. And now he's got a little bit more of a hunched. There we go. There we go. A lot of exploration, guys, to get to. Uh... Also, maybe maybe is I kind of like the idea of all this hair kind of pushing pushing forward. So he's got like a kind of hunched over neck. That's kind of fun. Into that skin flap. I like his expression, but now I have to figure out, do I want him holding, uh... I mean, he could just be... I also don't want this to hit any, um... I kind of want to keep the drawing readable, right? So, putting that pipe in there somewhere. Might be better if it comes out this side. And then maybe we can take this whole arm. No. I think it's better if it's facing down. I, I, I'm, oops. Oops, I grouped it. Um, so I just think his... The silhouette of... Right in here. To have his silhouette of his hand. In like a really cool the like relaxed pose to show like the length of it, I think could be really cool. Um, since their hands are so neat. I love how long their palms are, so. I kind of want to play with that. I don't mind if he's just holding, he's just holding it by the teeth, like the little pipe. I guess the question is just which way do I want it to stick out? He's got two down. Um, so the question is, is it more interesting for it to come out and be over here? In which case it would probably stand out a little easier behind the, uh, in front of being in front of the arm instead of being kind of buried in the chest and then we can make sure that we show the overlap of where his um, clothing and everything is. So we'll just give that a bit more breathing room. If that all makes sense. A 
I'm also gonna look up uh, more accurate smoking pipe. Most of them seem to be pretty simple. They're kind of like, uh, which actually kind of works. They're very square, actually. They don't have like this hook. They're actually just pretty straight. So they actually just kind of stick out like this. There are really long ones, which could be kind of fun maybe later, if that's something that we decide to kind of keep or not, but. Can do something like that. And then we can have the smoke come out that way. I'm also going to take this and this. I'm going to rotate this more so I can make it longer. Cooler. I just really want to always exaggerate how long their uh, fingers and palms are. Cool. I think that's working. Maybe his hair is so long, it lays on the ground and makes kind of a cool. I like the idea of his hair being so long that it, it really drapes down. It'd be fun. I mean, I feel like I could even grab all of this and pull it out maybe even more. I hope this is helpful to kind of watch. Because um, I think, again, I think a lot of people will see like, a, I mean, I do tons of experimenting first before I finalize most of my drawings. Some drawings come a little easier than others, but you know, for something that's really challenging that you're really trying to capture an idea for, um, they don't always come super easily. And like, there's just tons of exploring that has to happen sometimes. Um, So I hope that's helpful to see, because I think, you know, we live in an age with social media where we just kind of see a lot of finished work. And my goal with um, what I stream and stuff is, is really more about process than it is about finishing stuff. That's why all the characters that we create, um, you know, they're just kind of like maquettes. That's, what, that's basically what I treat them like. They're just character ideas. Um, that you can fully finalize, finalize later, or never hit them or touch them again, depending on how busy you are. But it's really just more about showing that that process of creating a an interesting character, an interesting archetype. Right? That's what it's really about. Uh. ET2K9. Now, why do you guys have these complicated names? Don't make me do this. Be like Bob on the internet. Um, they're saying that uh, they didn't know they can move around sketches that easily. And yeah, I think I think the important thing is um, I try to keep it in this super loose phase for a while. Um, there's like cool tassels or something hanging off of this. Um, 
for that reason exactly is because I'm not married to anything that I'm drawing. And I think it's really important to stay that way for as long as possible um, in the process. Because if you, if you start really liking a drawing that you're doing, then you're never going to see the flaws or see the faults in it. Um, I wish this was like pro procreate now because I could go back all the way to the beginning of the drawing. I mean, we, you can just scroll back, I guess, when this goes back on YouTube. But you can look at where we started versus, um, you know, where we ended up with all these drawings and ideas and how it kind of all comes together eventually. Um, you just kind of kind of have it's it's calling and, you know, it's called uh, embracing the suck, right? It's trying to get through all these bad drawings or all these kind of like drawing ugly, you know, type uh, feelings to get to one that feels good. Um, and I probably won't be able to colorize this today, but I hopefully maybe we can get through some how I would finalize the line work a little bit on this. And maybe that's helpful for you guys to watch. I don't know. E.T. Okay, E.T. Cool. <laughs> Sound like an old lady. You guys and your internet names. I'm over here being like steak and eggs. On the right layer. Okay. So line work, I think it's, um, I mean, everyone's different with their line work. I try not to go super, super crazy with my line work. I keep it still pretty um, sketchy and like loose. It's just slightly more refined than what, you know, my sketches have tons of lines um, and this will just be slightly more refined than that, but um, along with like extra little details and things, but I really try not to uh, say, get really, really anal about it. Um, just cause I personally, I take too long as well. Um, so I don't like taking a really long time on my line work. I like trying to just get it out there so I can have something done <laughs> at a decent rate. Um, and I think it's actually really important to go and look up people that you admire their line work. And like, if you can find a really high res image of it, go and break it down. Cause you'll realize that when you zoom into certain line work, you're like, oh man, that was not, that's not as clean as I, it's clean, but it's not as clean as you thought it was usually. Um, so I definitely challenge you to go do that. I'm actually going to change this brush setting here. I want the minimum diameter to be a little thicker than that. Because I feel like I'm tapering too much, so I'm drawing over my lines too much. There we go. It's better. For sketching, that's fine, but I I, I want to be more um, confident with my final line work, and I'll start to kind of like ink in stuff as well. I'm a big fan of like line weights, so really making sure that you know if something's hitting an edge or um, depth. Usually, I'll add that a little later. I won't get into it immediately. Um, Unless I'm really confident that it's going to be the uh, final, final line work. I'll first try to block all this in first. I'll make that even more curly. And this is also where, you know, before I was making kind of like, like this is hair, but now I'm going to make more strong, just hair shape. Right? Lower that opacity even more. 
probably lock that layer just so that we don't accidentally draw on it. So now I'll try to start making also more uh, conscious design choices with my line work. But you'll see my line work is not super, super clean. It's just about um, making clean choices, I guess, is the better way to word it. Right, so there's still a lot of drawing that I'm doing and 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 um, exploring. This is where you can start figuring out, you know, making sure that all your hair or whatever it may be is going in kind of like the right directions or it's rolling off or in front of the right things. There's good overlap. Oh, shoulder. Oh. That's the one thing I'm still not used to yet. <laughs> Man, my arm gets so tired by the end of the day. It's crazy. I'm gonna have really buff shoulder. Just the one though, like um, that old movie. Do you guys remember Lady in the Water? Is that what it's called? With the do with the one buff buff arm. If you guys remember that, then you guys are not as young as I think, which would be great. The movie was weird. I appreciate it. Some um, trying to be original. But I think I still remember the uh, the monsters from that being kind of cool, but I don't know. Could be wrong. So it's weird. Uh... And you can see like, okay, so here's a good example of what I'm trying to redraw. Is like, I'm like, yeah, there's like a knot here. <laughs> but you can see my scribbles are not super conscious at all. So this is where I'll go in and say, okay, let's actually try to make, I don't know, some interesting, like, knot design. And this will come with just also, um, you know, you should be like using reference and looking at stuff. And also just after drawing a certain number of things, you, you get kind of good at figuring out what you can what you need to sketch out versus what you can do in the final. Um, a lot of my drawings, I'll, I'll kind of, this is how I kind of map stuff out is, um, I just know that there's like cool detail here. And then now I got to try to figure out kind of that detail. And I think this will be sitting on like a decorated sash or something. And that sash can go all the way down. Oh, I love drawing folds. Folds are super fun. If I, know, if I don't know what to draw for the day, I'll usually end up being like, let's do some cloth studies, because never get enough of that. Um... ET's asking, am I all digital? Do I like to go analog for some um, part of my process in the beginning or brainstorming? Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know if you guys, where am I on this thing? So I always have a sketchbook that I'm constantly sketching in. I have tons of ideas in here. And a lot of the, um, if you follow me on Instagram, a lot of the drawings that I post are usually sketches that start in pen sketches in here. 
Um, Cause they're just really quick like silhouette shapes or studies. And then I'll take that and try to redraw it digitally. Um, so I have a, I have a whole drawing page of uh, these like anthropomorphic sharks. And if you follow my Instagram, you probably maybe have seen one of my latest posts is a anthropomorphic fisherman shark dude. So like, yeah, I, I constantly am using um, analog or traditional drawing, you know, cause I actually, I like to ideate more um, traditionally than I do on sketchbook or around uh, digital, just because it, it feels very, um, I don't know, when you're exploring digitally, you know, you're turning on and off all these layers and you're like moving stuff to try to like stay within your page. Um, and it doesn't feel as natural, or at least to me it doesn't. So for me, I, I really like and prefer um, having just a big sketchbook that I can kind of like experiment and break stuff in. Um, it feels more organic just to be able to turn a page than it does to, you know, turn on and off layers. But to each their own. I mean, I can sketch, you know, and ideate digitally. I just, I, I usually prefer to uh, do it traditionally. to get some like cool fat pieces in there but then also some like thinner hair pieces it's gonna be very interesting to um sculpt this later i always have to remind myself that ashley you're designing something that you're forcing yourself to sculpt in three sessions <laughs> so good me good on me yay Where's some I'm trying to see how their what their fur looks like on their hands? It's really just all fur. It's so fluffy, actually. So their their hand fur is like really big, and then it's kind of like hidden. There we go. So you can see how, how much choice how many choices i'm making in the final line art compared to um the sketch not 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 everybody's like this um again i'm not i my line work is clean but still very much in the realm of sketching so um i personally do tons of exploring still even in my final line work drawing. Um, just because I, I don't do super, super clean, refined line work. I, I do kind of sketchy line work. And then you'll see that I'll add uh, line weights to this as well. You'll see how much that adds to a drawing. Cause I think it adds a lot to a drawing. So just trying to make sure that I'm, I'm getting enough cool breakup in there. And this is also another thing too, is, you know, if this is really busy, then you want this area to be, you know, really relaxed or an area of rest, right? Um, so it's kind of about complex versus simple um, when we're designing these shapes. So like even the top of this, I might not even add any fur because there's just so much going on, you know, on the bottom of this. So little beads. I think I still want this to feel like uh, it's really drooping a lot, so. Okay. 
And you can add a hint of like where that elbow would be or where some of that anatomy would be falling off the Because there's, there's also little spots on an orangutan that aren't fully haired, especially on the tops of like the shoulder and stuff. Their hair is very interesting. Um, it doesn't follow everywhere all the time. I'll always add a new layer for... Um, lines. There we go. And then I can just erase away what I know I won't see. figure out how I want to do the back of the hand here. I'm just kind of hint at it. And little tassel that he wears. I'm sure I'm not any, missing any questions on the, the onlines. I could probably just merge these two now. And then for this, I think what I'll do is um, I'll make a new layer. I'm just going to do one side and then I will duplicate it, flip it, line it up, merge it down, and then just kind of warp it into place. that. I can merge that down. And then you can add like thickness and stuff on one side or the other to get the sense that it's not, you know, just a mirrored thing that you just did. And I, I have no idea what this is, by the way. I just, I don't know, I'm making something up. Make lots of little tassels for this dude. Be kind of fun. So at the bottom being a circle, maybe just something a little more interesting than that. Synth is asking out of curiosity, are orangutans considered more intelligent among other ape species? You know, I'm not entirely sure. I know they're way more, um, what would you call it? Um, 
if you're not as aggressive, like their social structures from what I understand are like pretty peaceful. Like they're not as aggressive as something like a ape or like bonobos and stuff are. I don't know if they're considered smarter. Um, Cause I think ape, I think apes and orangutans have both been taught um, some sort of form of sign language. So but I'm not entirely sure how much smarter they are. I know they're definitely more interested and curious in what I do. Like when I've gone to the zoo, um, gorillas and uh, chimpanzees do not care about me drawing. They'll be curious as to maybe what like the gorilla might look and be like, why has she been there for so long? Like standing in front of the glass. Um, but for the most part, they're not super interested, but almost I've had the orangutan scenario happen more than once um, where they're very interested in like what you're doing and they take they take a lot of they're very curious I definitely know that I think they're more curious than um, their other counterparts So I want to draw like a second sash piece thing that I want to hang down and then it like crumples in and comes out and then lays onto the floor. I'll also do a lot of things where like the feet are way more simplified than um, like somewhere like up in the face, like I'll give way more detail to the face area because that's the area of focus that I want to give detail to, right? So keep that in mind as well. When you're doing line work, it's in, I, I'm not a big fan of um, I mean, everyone does line work differently, but I personally am not a big fan of detail everywhere. Um, I think it's like too distracting to the eye, so. I want to hear, feel like some of the hair is bunched up behind the knee as well. Be kind of fun. But yeah, I think the biggest thing to get out of this is that I, my sketching also becomes more impatient <laughs> as I sketch. So, uh, cause I just, I just don't have, um, I'm just not an artist that honestly has like a lot of patience for sitting and doing line work for like three days straight. That's just not me. My line work, I want to be done, you know, within the same day. <laughs> So for me, um, a huge part of my pipeline as well is, is, pl is playing into that, is my unfortunate weakness, which is impatience. Um, which is okay, but that's really where I've developed a lot of my uh, line work style as well. Trying to get to feel like it's crumpled up at the bottom. Cool. Flipping your canvas, always important. Now if I hide the... 
your initial sketch, you'll see that I have my line work pretty laid out. Um, now this is the thing that I think brings line work, at least for me, this is the magical part, is adding line weights. This is the part that's super fun for me as well, is starting to add where there's this um, sense, of, sense of depth to everything. So it's kind of like a, you can kind of think of it as like an occlusion class, like where things are touching or getting really close to one another. You're going to put kind of darkness or a thicker line weight in there. And this is where you'll really see a lot of your, at least to me, this is where my sketches come more alive. Because then you'll start to get a better feeling and sense of um, overlap with your, with your work. And I do like some slight hatching and little things here and there that kind of make my line work mine. Um, but you'll find your own little method and your own way of doing this stuff, but this is kind of just what I like to do. And I bounce around a lot at this stage. Um, I just kind of do whatever hits my eye to, to fix or follow. Um, Higur on YouTube is asking, as a 3D artist, I think 2D drawing sketching can help a lot on visualize, visualizing ideas, but I'm so bad at drawing. How can I improve drawing to help my 3D projects? Is it like, just do it? Um, I think a lot of it is just do it. There is a lot of just, you know, practice makes progress. That's, that's what the, as the old saying goes, um, at least in my mind. It's not practice makes perfect because nothing it will ever be perfect. Um, but even if you're not good at drawing, I think it can help, like you said, visualize ideas. I think it's actually a really good way to put it. Um, where it's not about the drawing itself, it's about the idea that you're conceptualizing, right? Um, there's a plenty of people out there that aren't, I wouldn't say they're the best drawers or draftsmen, but they have really good ideas. And then vice versa, I think there's a lot of people that are really good draftsmen that don't have the strongest ideas. So um, they kind of, they're kind of, they're two different muscles that you kind of work. Um, so creativity and invention and, you know, design is a totally different muscle really than um, your execution of those drawings and design, which is kind of annoying. Um, cause you might have a good idea, but you just have no idea how to get that across. Right. Um, but I think both are really important to practice and a lot of it just comes with, you know, I think the easier one to focus on is just your draftsman skills. So drawing, and that comes with, you know, learning perspective and learning those basic fundamentals of, um, you know, color theory and design language. But my biggest thing with that is, you know, at least my advice for stuff like that is that can get really dry or boring sometimes. So um, I always try to make it fun. I mean, for me, I love drawing animals. So doing anatomy drawings were not studies for me. They were just what I wanted to do. Um, but, you know, if you need to draw, if you're trying to practice like drawing hands, for example, or something like that, um, Try to turn each of your, you know, have reference of hands, but try to turn those hands into like an orangutan hand and then do like a beast hand. And then what if it's like a fish man hand? And then what if it's this? And I think that helps. One, it trains your creative brain, right? Cause you're like, ooh, what if I take this hand reference and turn it into Godzilla um, hand or something like that. Um, but then you're also, you know, you're still looking at reference and you're still drawing. And I'm a big believer that I, I'm a big believer in drawing when it's fun to draw. Um, I know sometimes that's not always the case because, you know, we 
sometimes work for a living or whatever it may be. We may draw for a living. You know, I do art for a living. So sometimes keeping it fun can be hard, but I think it's really important to keep studying and drawing fun for yourself, especially in the beginning. I don't want you to feel like it's homework and you don't, you shouldn't feel pressured to do it. You should feel like you want to do it because then the more you have fun doing it, the more you'll do it. And then the more that becomes habit, right? Or if you're forcing yourself to do it, I think you'll drop the habit way faster. Um, if that makes sense. But a lot of drawing, unfortunately, is just drawing. But there are ways um, to draw and learn correctly. Then, you know, if you don't know where to start, I think taking like a figure drawing course or going to a figure drawing class is a great way to start. Um, you know, courses in perspective, it kind of depends on how comfortable you feel and like where your skill level is at. But, um, yeah, that's what I, I hope that helps, but I know it's probably a really long winded response, but I'm also sitting here and like drawing, so. But yeah, you can see where the, the areas that I've hit for the line weight versus not, like night and day difference, right? Super cool. I love seeing the line weight um, make everything just kind of pop out. Um, Studio X Plus says, uh, it's a really good point. I have more time spent over the years developing my idea, developing skills rather than my technical drawing skills. Quality of my drawing isn't a priority anymore, but able to visualize the idea is important. Yeah, definitely. I think it's more important to have really cool, interesting ideas nowadays more than it is about like the execution of a drawing. Um, I still think you should learn how to draw. Um, but the moment I let go of getting really technical with how I draw, like for example, my it took me a long time to draw my line weight work like this, like my line art work this way, where it was just so carefree. I used to be so anal about every single brush stroke and every single little thing, and I never liked it. I never liked my work and I didn't find it fun. Um, and I was just struggling a lot, but the moment I just kind of let go and just kind of um, did what I enjoyed doing with sketching, then all of it kind of clicked together for me. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's super common. I don't think there's enough overlap here, so I'm gonna... We'll make sure people know that the leg is in front of this little folded bit. But yeah, I think it's important to hone in both, but you know, if I wasn't practicing my creativity, I wouldn't be able to come up, you know, I could draw an orangutan, but then I couldn't come up with an idea that's interesting for our like archetype stream, right? So I think they kind of go hand in hand a lot of the times. Um, but I think a lot of beginning students focus too heavily on the execution of a thing, the technical drawing side, rather than focusing on your creative side as well. Um, so yeah, definitely don't don't lose that practicing your creativity because um, that's really you know if you want to do concept art or something like that, you need to know how to draw. But it's really going to be about how many variations of a thing can you make, you know, um, how many ideas can you spit out a day. That's that's really what you're going to be getting paid for. So.
just to break up that space. I think in the end, I'll also, for the 3D one, I think I want to put like some cool, you know, um, design elements on his uh, little sash here. I think that could be really cool. I got myself a little lost. There we go. Where's this sash gonna go? It's a lot of things that are overlapping. It'll also help later if I color this that you'll see the difference between all these. He's asking any recommendations on how to build up that creativity muscle. I think a lot of it is about um, looking at reference and then saying how how can you take that and make it your own. Um, so I guess you know a good example was you know take take hands, um, just human hands. You know find human hand reference, but then try to take that human hand and turn it into something else. Um, now following the same forms, the same pose, and understanding the same 3D elements and, you know, the technical drawing of it, but turn it into something else, you know? What if that hand that's doing this was, like, a sheep hand? Like, what would that look like, you know? And, and asking yourself that question. But, you know, the example for this, too, is, um, you know, this was the reference that we had. So, you know, he is a orangutan, but when I came to designing this pose... You know, I was like, oh, I like this old man smoking a cigarette on this fish boat. Now, we didn't really add a whole lot else about that reference, but it's more about the idea of who this character represents that we're using that for. And then, like, these sashes I got from here, right? And I like these little bells that maybe I could even add now, right? And these cool tassels, right? I love this tassel shape. Super interesting. Um... And then same thing with, you know, this man's holding this giant stick out, but I was like, oh, what if he's just holding his big weapon out? Because I wanted to accentuate how long his arm is, right? So, um, not saying that that's easy to come up with. I made it probably look a little easier than it is, but I've had a lot of practice at it. Um, so it's really about taking these real world ideas. And you'll see, not that this is wrong, but I don't usually have other artists' inspirations on my mood board to begin with. Um, because I want to find things in the real world um, first. And so I think that's also really important um, is, you know, art is about the expression of your own views of life and how you see things. And I think that's what makes you a unique artist is how you interpret what's out there. Um, but if you don't do that yourself, then it's really hard for you to find like your own kind of voice, if that makes sense. Um, I know it sounds like probably really artsy, but it's true. I'm trying to finish up this line work for you guys, but I don't have much time left. But we we're almost there. And then surrounding yourself with other creative artists, I think, is also a really great way to train your creative creativity. Um, I have a special someone that I talk to about just story and character. They're not artists, um, they don't draw, but they love to create and talk about story and character. And that's super inspiring for me. Um, Cause it gets me thinking about, you know, the important parts of characters, not just visually, but you know, um, story wise. And I think that stuff is also super, super helpful. Um, and I get tons of ideas from from that too. So, you know, find creativity in 
unexpected places. I think that's where a lot of that comes from. Yeah, so studio saying, um, not to compare yourself to other artists. And I do think that's really important. You know, I used to sit there and get really upset that my work didn't look like Ian McKegg's, but then I had to remember that he's been drawing longer than I've been alive. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, that's gonna amount to something, right? So it's, um, it's really important to keep that in mind and that art is your own journey and you shouldn't compare it to anybody's. Um, and that really you should just keep it fun. It's really hard nowadays because social media and, you know, everyone wants a job, so they want to compare themselves. It's important to compare to see skill-wise maybe where you can improve. Um, but don't get upset about the process of getting better. That's the part that's supposed to be fun because art is nothing but about getting better. Um, I'm still always getting better. I'm still always improving. I'm not the greatest artist ever, no one is. Um, we all have our own art journeys, you know? And, um, you know, I mean, this streaming has gotten, has made me way more, uh, I draw way more on my own now because I, I stream for all you lovely people on the internet and that's super cool too. So I get inspired by being able to show you guys what I do. Um, and that's super motivating to me to keep up with my own journey. And I hope that helps you keep up with yours. Um, but yeah, you can't compare yourself to... Don't compare yourself to me. Just use me as a inspiration guide. Of like, oh man, she's out there doing it. You can do it too. <laughs> um, you know, that's really what you should take away from, from looking at people's artwork on online. And yeah, just fill your reference with, you know, real world stuff um first and then when you're when you're trying to be feel and figure out how to execute something maybe you can look up your favorite artists and like break down you know how they would you know render something i studied a lot of like hugo richards um line work and i studied um hachi hibichim hibichim i never remember his name I'm so sorry but Pi he goes by pyru daily or something on instagram um you know, so I, I look at a lot of people's line work or the renderings of Rob Bliss because he also uses 3D, but he's also really good at just 2D drawing. Rob Bliss is probably one of my favorite artists of all time. Um, my artwork looks nothing like his, um, but I still take a lot of inspiration from his ideas. So it's about just being inspired by those around you, not comparing your level of progress to them. Because there's always going to be somebody right? There's always going to be that person that you're like, dang it, they're better than me. <laughs> um, I mean, heck, I, I probably even teach students at some point that are, you know, better sculptors than me. But the, the difference is that you just don't know ZBrush. Maybe they only know traditional, but I can't be, that's not something to get upset about. That's just something to be like, wow, that's really cool. And I'll just keep doing my own journey. I think that's our line work. For now, let's say I'm done. But yeah, you can see how that line white stuff just mwah, just adds it, makes it really cool. Um, so that is wrapping up now. We finished right at six o'clock. So um, now that I'm on this, I'm just like, oh, I gotta noodle forever, but I'm not going to. Um, maybe I'll color this guy. I might as well because he's so finalized for line work. Um, I think this is the farthest I've ever gone for line work for the stream but um again i'll color this guy maybe during the week but join me next time as we bring this character into 3d so we're going to start sculpting him um and figuring out more of his uh shape language and more of his outfit and things like that and there will probably make changes along the way um so yeah that's going to be super fun so again that's you know next week Tuesdays here with me, your host on Archetype, sponsored by Lenovo and AMD. So I appreciate you guys tuning in and I will catch you guys next week. All right. Bye.